Today we're going to wrap up the series on prayer. We've been talking about too busy not to pray. And we've been looking at great prayers, some of the great prayers of the Bible. And I don't think any series on prayer would be complete without talking about what Jesus said about prayer. And so today as we wrap this series up, I want to talk to you about praying like Jesus. How do you pray like Jesus? Now, uh, the, the passages I'm going to read today, you're probably familiar with. I have preached from them many times before. I haven't preached this particular message before, but I've preached these scriptures before. Now, before you turn it off, you say, well, I've heard this before. Let me just challenge you um, that in your spiritual walk, hearing the same thing again and again and again can often be one of the greatest blessings of your life. I mean, for example, uh, how many of you have eaten before? Raise your hand. You've had a meal. Now, how many of you have said, you know what, I've done that. I'm not going to ever do that again. Well, of course, you don't do that. You know why? Because it's important that you eat, right? And in the same way spiritually, it's important that you eat spiritually, that you get fed spiritually. Here's what I've learned. That if you will ask God to speak to you, no matter how common the scripture may be, I believe God will speak to you. And I just use this as an example. I've read the Bible. Of course, I'm a pastor. I've read the Bible through from cover to cover, every word, probably at least 40 times. I've read the New Testament more than that. I've read some passages of scripture and some books of the Bible hundreds of times. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours studying the Word of God. But you know what I find to be true? That in spite of even some of the ones that I, verses that I've memorized, when I think about them, they're a huge blessing. Let me just give you one of the most common ones that probably everybody here knows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I cannot hear that scripture without being blessed. I never get tired of thinking about how much God loves me. I never get tired of thinking about how much God has changed me and how that God has blessed me and that he has given me a home in heaven for all of eternity. So today, as we read these scriptures, I hope you will take that attitude and ask God to speak to you. Even if it's something that you say, well, I've already heard that before. I believe that when you ask God to speak to you, he will reveal himself to you in a fresh and a new way. Well, I'm going to begin reading in Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to read several verses out of this passage. And then we're going to read in another portion of Scripture. Um, but I want you to see today that Jesus taught us some things about prayer. Let's look in... Uh, Verse 5, Matthew chapter 6. And Jesus said, and when you pray. Notice that he didn't say if you pray. He didn't say when you get around to pray. He said when you pray. The assumption is that you're going to talk to God. And I believe in learning what Jesus said about prayer, that you can identify what talking to God is, what prayer is, and some of you probably pray more than you think you do. And we can learn how to have that communion with God. When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. We don't want to be like them. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Have you ever, now don't raise your hand, you don't want to tell them yourself. Have you ever done something just because somebody else was watching? You ever just did something because you wanted them to think better of you? Now, there are some aspects of that that are good, okay? Uh, you want to be on your best behavior. Um, I, when I was in college, I lived in a men's dormitory, probably the grossest place on the planet of the earth. And there are things that when you're an unmarried young man living in a college dormitory that you don't do in polite society and you don't do if you want to impress a girl and get married one day okay but we're talking about how you uh, are in prayer especially 
talking to an audience of one, not to an audience of many. Uh, you're to talk to God. He said they are like, they like to be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they've received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, what was Jesus saying? Was he saying that you have to find a clothes closet or broom closet and crawl into that or God will not hear your prayer? No, what he's saying is don't try to impress others with your prayer, but talk to God as an audience of one. Now, here's my first point. I've got three points today. Number one, Jesus said to pray sincerely. Prayer is to be sincere. It's not just about trying to be seen by others. And we've all seen prayers like that. Um, If you grew up in a church like I did that had uh, people come from the audience to come up to the stage and pray, to lead in prayer. They pray over the offering or they pray over the service or whatever or dismiss in prayer. Often I heard many flowery words that I really wasn't sure what they meant even when I was growing up, right? So we're not to try to pray to impress others. We are rather to pray sincerely. Now let me ask you a question. Are you sincere with God? You might as well be truthful with him because he already knows what you're thinking. You ever tried to put on with God and like pretend with God? How silly is that? The truth is God says, pray sincerely. Now let's read on, understanding that prayer is a conversation, not a ceremony. Prayer is a conversation with God. And you can pray. God designed us to pray. Uh, animals don't pray. But did you know this? And I've said this to you before. Did you know that anthropologists have discovered that every culture that they've studied, every culture on earth, every culture in history prays? Now, not all pray to the one true God. We know that. Not all are Christians. But everyone prays. What does that tell us? God designed you to have a conversation with him. God wants you to pray sincerely. And, you know, you can follow a plan for prayer, and I recommend that. And you can have a time for prayer, and I recommend that. But I do believe that God listens to sincere prayers. Sincere prayers. Not the ones that uh, are just trying to impress other people. I had a guy one time, we had a prayer meeting before church, not this church. I was pastor of another church before we started this church. And um, he thought that I should send my kids to a different school than I was sending my kids to. And I'll never forget it. We had prayer and we were, uh, we had had breakfast and we started to pray. And this guy got, he got right up next to me. He's like, oh God, I pray that you'd show Pastor Richie that he needs to send his kids. And he called the school out. And you know what, during prayer I did, and I know I probably shouldn't have done this, but I could not resist. I called the guy's name, I said, hey, you're not talking to God, you're talking to me, and I ain't sending my kids to that school, all right? (laughs) So what is the point? Prayer is to be sincere. It's to be to God. Um, Matthew 6, verses 7 and 8, the next two verses, here's what it says, when you pray, Do not use a lot of meaningless words as the pagans do who think that their gods will hear them because their prayers are so long. Did you know the Bible does not give an amount of time that you should pray? In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, could you not tarry with me one hour? And so an hour is a good time to pray. But you know that most of, in fact, all of the prayers recorded in the Bible are not very long. Probably the longest prayer in the Bible would be just a few minutes. So God doesn't want you to think that just because you're able to string together a bunch of words, that that means you're, you're a prayer warrior. No, he says, don't be like them. Your father already knows what you need before you ask him. And then the same two verses in the message paraphrase, and I love this. Let me read it to you. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice. 
peddling techniques for getting what you want from God, don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. That brings me to my second point. Jesus said to pray simply. He wants us to pray sincerely, but he also wants us to pray simply. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about prayer. And I've heard some pastors say, well, people in my church, all the prayer requests we get are for health or family problems. Now, the Bible is very clear that we're to pray about everything. If you're wondering if it's okay to pray about your health or your family problems or your needs, yes, it is. But you don't wanna just pray that. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute what Jesus taught about doing this. But the fact is, God wants us to pray simply and he wants us to understand that when we pray, we can talk to God, okay? Um, you can talk to God about anything and everything. In fact, the Bible tells us to pray about everything, everything. I heard a pastor say this one time. There was a young man in his church that was struggling with watching pornography. And he just kept on coming to the pastor and he's like, well, I messed up again and I messed up again and I messed up again. And I'm not trying to pile on to anybody that has done that, okay? I, there's a I saw pornography the first time when I was 10 years old. It profoundly affected my brain. Um, and, and I'm not trying to make, say that to be funny, but it does. But I want you to know there's deliverance in Jesus Christ. If God can deliver me, he can deliver you, okay? And, and, and I want you to understand that uh, this pastor, he said to this guy, he said, um, you want to stop doing this? He said, yeah. He said, well, just pray about it before you ever look at it. He said, you just uh, start to watch that. He said, Lord, I pray that you bless me as I watch this. And, uh, and you know what? That young man stopped looking at pornography. What, why? He was praying simply. He was praying real things. You don't have to be fake in your prayer. You can pray very simply, which brings me to the, to the last thing I want to uh, spend a few minutes here. In Matthew 6, 9 through 13, and I'm reading this from the old King James Version because I think it's so beautiful and poetic. We know it as the Lord's Prayer. Let's read it. He says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we call that the Lord's Prayer. But I believe that brings me to my third point. Jesus said to pray systematically. You might notice that these all began with the same letter S, all right? He wants us to pray um, simple prayers, okay? He wants us to pray sincere prayers. I can't even remember my own point, all right? And he wants us to pray systematically because I really do believe that the Lord's Prayer was not just given to us to repeat or to memorize. Now, I hope you do memorize it, but I really believe what Jesus was doing was to give us a way to pray, a pattern for prayer. And I just want to break this down for you real quick and we'll be done. First of all, I want you to see the word posture. In fact, I would challenge every person to write this down. If you have a Bible, write it in your Bible. If you have a phone, you don't have anything to write with, type it in the notes in your phone. Uh, if you don't have a phone or a Bible or a piece of paper, uh, find an offering envelope and write on the back of that. If you can't find an op uh, offering envelope, get out a pen and write on your hand, okay? Just don't wash your hands before you go home unless you use the bathroom. Then wash them, please, all right? So, but remember these things because it will help you to pray. The first word is posture. Notice what he said. Our Father who art in heaven. You know what that is? That's putting yourself in the right posture to pray. What does that mean? It means you're submitting to God. You're surrendering to God, right? Now, notice what Jesus said. Now, did Jesus have to say, now, 
you know, uh, you don't want a question that will blow your mind. Is Jesus God? Yes, okay. Uh, is God given to us in three persons? We call that the Trinity, one God, three persons. Yes, Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, I had somebody ask me, so does that mean Jesus was praying to himself? You figure that out on your own, okay? I, I believe that he was praying to the Father, understanding this. Our Father who art in heaven, what was he saying? What was he saying? He said, you're God. When you and I pray that prayer, no, this wouldn't be true if Jesus prayed this prayer. But when you and I pray that prayer, you know what we're saying? You're God and I'm not. You ever try to play God like you know what's best for the universe? You know what's best for the world? You know what's best for the country? Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to play God. Oh, I didn't actually think that I am God, but how many times do we do that? Saying to God, as if he didn't know. Saying to God, as if he was not in control. Questioning his character because we didn't like what happened to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, you're God, I'm not. You're posturing yourself uh, to allow yourself to pray and to acknowledge God. By doing that, it increases your relationship with God. It makes it better. It makes you closer to God. Our Father, who art in heaven. Second thing is praise. You, you get in the right posture, and then you praise God. He said, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, he was just praising God. And you and I, if we will become thankful, and I realize thankfulness and praise are not exactly the same thing, but they're very close. They're like cousins, okay? And uh, when you're thankful, you're thanking God for all he's done and, and so forth. When you're praising God, you're thanking God for who he is, okay? So you, you think about that. When I praise God, what am I doing? I'm just thanking him that he's in heaven, that he's in control, that he is good, uh, that he never makes a mistake, that he is the one that keeps his promises, that he is the one that forgives my sin, that he's the one that makes me right with him. Man, I can praise him all day long for that. But then I'm to be thankful. Even the things that I don't like. The Bible says in everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I like how the Apostle Paul wrote that. He said, this is the will of God. He could have left it there. But he said, this is the will of God in Christ. In other words, in your relationship with God, it will draw you closer or make you a better Christian. Uh, so give thanks uh, in everything, give thanks. Why? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And then he didn't leave the personalization out of it. He said, concerning you, in case you're thinking that I'm talking to somebody else. You ever hear a sermon and say, boy, I tell you, so-and-so sure didn't need that. And you elbow your wife and say, are you listening, honey? You know. <laughs> Most of the time it goes the opposite way. The wife is the one that elbows the husband. Do you, are you listening? No, <clears throat> he didn't say concern your husband or your wife or the person that you're mad at in the church. He said it's God's will concerning you, you, you. God wants us to pray in everything. We're to praise him. The, the next word is the word purpose. He said thy kingdom Come. That's the purpose of God in the earth. That is God, you pray for the church. Pray for people to be saved. Pray for people in your family to be saved. Pray for our country to turn to God. Pray for uh, evangelism across the world. Uh, that's the purpose of God. And you submit to that when you pray, uh, thy kingdom come. And what we're saying is, listen, this is good. This will help you. Uh, you're saying thy kingdom, not my kingdom. Boy, we want our own kingdom a lot, don't we? We want to be, uh, anybody else, you don't have to raise your hand. I know there are a lot of you. Anybody else that you have control issues, you like being in charge, you like calling the shots, you like telling everybody else what to do. You think that if everybody in the world would just listen to you, that all the problems would be solved, you know. 
I'm guilty. I know I would make the good, a good king of the world, all right? I, I really do. I, I mean, if they would just put me in charge, I could solve a lot of our issues, I promise you, okay? Um, now, I might get assassinated my first day in office, but uh, <laughs> no, here's the thing. You're saying uh, that your purpose, your kingdom come, and then this is the next word, the word plan, okay? And, and this is what Jesus said. And this is one of the hardest prayers to pray, but it's one of the most important prayers to pray. And it's a prayer that gets answered every single time that you pray it. Here's what it is. Jesus said, thy will be done. Thy will be done. I think C.S. Lewis is the one that said this. See if I get the quote right. He said, we either say to God, thy will be done, or God says to us, thy will be done. And I can promise you, you don't want your will to be done. You want God's will to be done. And I believe that is, in essence, what it means to go to hell. Eternal separation from God. I believe hell's real. I believe it's a real place. And I believe it's a place of eternal torment. But listen, It's a place where you're separated from everything that brings joy and love and kindness and hope. And you are constantly throughout eternity absent of all of the characteristics of God. Galatians chapter 5 tells us this. And this is interesting. It says the fruit of the Spirit, love. What if you were in a place for all of eternity there was no love, only hate? Joy. What if you had not a single second of joy for the rest of eternity? Not a baby's laugh, not a smile, not a kind word, not something that you enjoy doing. Complete absence of the nature of God. No peace, love, joy, peace, no kindness. And we could go on. Um, So, What he is saying here is to pray God's will be done. And then he said, uh, we're to pray about provision. That's the next word, provision. Now, I find it interesting that there are about five things, uh, four things that we're to pray for before we pray for God's provision. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, does that mean that you can't pray for God to supply your need? No, Jesus said to pray it. I just think that we need to get out of ourselves in prayer and stop focusing on our little world. Should you pray for God's provision? Yes. Should you pray for um, God to bless you? Yes. Should you pray for protection? Should you pray for healing? Yes. Yes. We pray about everything. But you know what happens so many times? We just get in our own little world and all we think about is me, 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 me. Let's talk some more about me, right? And Jesus said, yeah, the Father is the one who provides, but get over yourself a little bit. Get out of your mind, Wait, that came out wrong. Don't get out of your mind. But um, get out of your way of thinking. That's what I was trying to say. You know what? We just like pray our little circle. Now, does that mean that you should pray about people all over the world that you don't know? Well, yeah, kind of it does. And uh, we should be praying for people to be saved in other parts of the world. We should be praying for Christians across the world. We should be praying for so many things. Why? Because it's not just about you not just about you. And what I've learned by experience and by the truth of the Word of God, the more I pray for others, the more God answers my prayers. Okay? Provision. And then penitence. And uh, I would have uh, put the word repentance, but it didn't begin with the letter P. And that just messed up my, that would mess up my vibe really bad. And so... We're to repent. He said, forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Did you know that Jesus said, if we don't forgive, then God wouldn't forgive us? 
why is it impossible for God to forgive us? No, the, the point is you don't understand what forgiveness is. If you're not willing to forgive others, if you're not willing to, uh, to give grace, you're not ready to receive grace. If you're not ready to give forgiveness, you're not ready to receive forgiveness. Why? Because repentance, you know what it is? It's to agree with God. It's to change your mind. And, and you know, you have someone that's hurt you, that's a debtor. Until you're willing to change the way you think, then you don't get repentance. We gotta change the way we think. We gotta turn from that. And then we pray for protection. He says, um, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Pray for God's protection. And then finally, we pray for God's power. What is that? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And all God's people said at the end of that prayer, amen. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.